Guys, today we're talking about my micro med kit essentials. So let's talk about what I carry in this little med kit that is located in the front of my PSK. Now admittedly, I talked about the PSK and I've mentioned this little kit numerous times, but I haven't really dug into what I carry and what I recommend carrying in a micro med kit. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so as always guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome content just like this. But admittedly, before we get into this uh, actual kit here, I do want to say, you know, whenever I do anything when it, in regards to medical equipment or supplies you should carry in the field, I always get, you know, comments saying it's not enough or you need to carry this or that. And understand that, especially in a PSK and especially in a Altoids tin that is literally less than the size of my hand that is already over brimming and the reason why I have both of the ranger bands on it is to keep it shut um, but you know I, I try to carry as much realistic supplies in here and you know this is stuff that I would really use that I have really used and gear that is legitimate once again this is not going to be any type of tourniquet or for mass trauma you know you should have an IFAC and a truck you know in case you accidentally really hurt yourself or, you know, you should carry a few things, you know, in a pack in case there's severe, you know, bleeding or real problems. And of course, you know, there's no replacement to an emergency room. There's no replacement to a hospital. Obviously, if there was a replacement to the hospital, the hospital wouldn't exist, right? So, yeah, that's kind of my long-winded story. So, um, yeah, let's talk about this. <laughs> Okay, so this is basically it, and how I have this set up or configured is realistically what I'm going to be using first and, you know, what I'm going to be using most commonly. So up front we have in a plastic, little plastic baggie, is just six Tylenol, and nothing too special here, just a general purpose pain reliever slash fever reducer in case you're sick, in case you catch a cold out on the trail and you're hiking, or, you know, if you're bushcrafting, camping, whatever, you know, you need something to temporarily relieve you until you can get back to civilization. Tylenol works okay. It's not the perfect thing, but you know, it's also pretty good. So that is what is right there. In addition to that, I also have a plastic bag right here. And the part of, re part of the reason I carry the plastic bag is to offset my other plastic bags in the PSK for water collection and purification. But it's a little bit more survival -y, so we won't really talk about that. Then next to that is two things of um, the generic name or the general name of Benadryl. And uh, this stuff is just good in case you get stung by bees and you have a mild allergic reaction or, you know, if there's some kind of critter or some kind of allergic reaction comes up and you need something, you know, just having some general purpose Benadryl is very handy. And you just, I have a couple pills here uh, for that. And I actually prefer, uh, you know, like buying a over-the-counter um, Benadryl and just taking a couple tabs off of that because these are really well weather sealed. So this, uh, you know, Altoids tin is not necessarily weather sealed, though it doesn't necessarily get wet either. But uh, having your pills in, you know, plastic like this, blister packs like this, makes them very weatherproof. So that is just um, Benadryl. So next to that, once again, kind of talking about allergic reactions, I have Afterbite here. And Afterbite is just a kind of, these are like wipes that you can wipe on yourself if you get bit, you know, uh, wiping over the area, especially if you get stung by hornets or bit by hornets. Um, this stuff is very handy for that. You know, it's just general pain relief and kind of, you know, helps with the healing of insect bites. So once again, this is more of a kind of quality of life thing. You'll probably still survive without this stuff. I know I've been stung to heck by hornets before, and I certainly didn't use any after bite and it sucked but <laughs> I made through without it. So that is that. So next to that, now we're kind of gonna dig into cuts, minor, or you know, kind of just making sure that if you do get cut in the wild, whether that's by a knife or you know, a, a foreign object, or especially how I would use this is say I'm processing a game animal like a grouse and I accidentally cut myself, this is the kind of stuff that I would like to have. So first and foremost, I have uh, some antiseptic or alcohol prep pads here, 
So these are alcohol prep pads and then some antiseptic towelettes. I think they're basically the same thing, but yeah, basically I, I believe they're the same thing, but prep pads, uh, alcohol prep pads to clean out your wound or kind of, you know, get the area as clean as possible. And then I have a, um, so then I'm gonna overlook the butterfly bandage real quick, but then I have uh, bacitracin right here. So just a couple little things of bacitracin. I really like these small packets. Uh, unfortunately, these can be kind of hard to find, but you can find these on Amazon, and I'd recommend just getting these little packets. They are a little bit pricey, but I like the convenience of having them in these small packets. So I, I would definitely put this stuff on once again after using the alcohol prep pads and or water if I had it to clean out a wound and then put the uh, bacitracin on. So butterfly closures work really great especially for cuts and like knife cuts and such. They help kind of cover or they help kind of close you back up but I have butterflies there and then just some general purpose kind of band-aids these are like easy access but I have um, four of the smaller band-aids so kind of just your generic or band-aid size band-aids and then I have three larger band-aid sized bandages um, same kind of general purpose and I actually kind of like these ones in fairness because they're not like the band-aid brand is just like a general large patch these ones if you guys can kind of see through the package have some articulation to the ends of them so if you do have to wrap them around a finger or something smaller you know uh, you can do that with relative ease so that is those band-aids and then I just have some sterile which is probably not super sterile but some sterile gauze pads here and I have I think like three of them in here and that's if I have to pack any wounds so it's not the best or most ideal situation but if I had to pack anything light you know nothing too crazy I can use gauze and then of course um then of course use a band-aid over top of that um, to kind of pack anything that's lighter. So uh, once again, this is not for crazy like gunshot wounds or ax cuts, you know, you wanna be mindful of the tools you're using and not to like really seriously hurt yourself with them. But, um, and like I said, obviously this is just for the personal survival kit. You should have a more advanced medical kit um, in a backpack or in a truck nearby you know um, that's a general rule of thumb but like I said I have this set up in a way that I have all my bandages kind of here and then I have my bacitracin right above that and then I have my alcohol prep pads above that and that's essentially done because that's the order I would use them in you know I would first clean the wound you know with water slash um, alcohol prep pads, then put the bacitracin down, then seal whatever wound I had. So that's basically my light ex field expedient wound care. It's nothing, like I said, amazing or super crazy, but also dealing with the fact that, you know, this is a very small kit. I think it's pretty comprehensive. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.